There it is. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to Surviving the Badge, Season 2. Uh, we have a special guest with us tonight, Caitlin, hey. from Murder Hour Podcast. Make sure you go over to Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your podcasts, and check out Murder Hour Podcast. It is absolutely fantastic. They talk about um, serial killers and cold case murderers, and it is not scripted. It is an absolutely fantastic show, and we could not be any happier than to have her with us tonight. Thank you for joining us. We Thank really you. appreciate it. Uh, tonight, we're going to be talking a little bit about a serial killer from our local area, and I'll save that and wait for us to uh, give the name on that here in a little bit. But uh, let me just introduce myself. I am Ronnie. I'm John. Camille. I'm Caitlin. And that's Caitlin. Uh, between us, we have about 75 to, what, 85 years of law enforcement experience. And we're going to give our viewpoints on certain cases that we chose to speak about in tonight's episode. How much do you contribute to that, Caitlin? None. Okay. Really. But she is our civil- civilian voice, which is awesome because, you know what? We always need that civilian voice to keep mm-hmm. us straight because sometimes we go down one road and one path and and maybe she can steer us in the middle somewhere. So that'll be nice. All right, so John, let's talk about uh, beer moment, my friend. Well, tonight we're going to try Paloma Ghost mm. from Cigar City Brewing. It's so, refreshingly tart. Did you find out what a ghost is? No, I do not know what a ghost is. <laughs> and that's a I love the honesty. Uh, <laughs> I like ghosts. I love I the know. honesty, John. I was thinking it was like when you don't call your girlfriend back. You know, you ghost ghost them. <laughs> but this ghost is spelled G O S E, so you know we're just a little don't bit off. Don't be her. That means you're putting beer on her. What is this called? Pal. Paloma? Paloma Gose. Paloma. Gose. Because it's, it's French. French. It's a French. Oh, French. Oh, French beer. Oh, it looks like that. It says, <laughs> it looks like that. Tart. And I just had a little sip, and oh my God, it is tart. You know, that's not wow. bad, though. It's not. I don't think it's as tart as the other one from last week. Yeah. yeah it's, 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 it's a different tart. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is more sour, where that was like lemon or, or lime, lime yeah. tart. Because I, I mean? like this one better than the one. From, from the last one. I like this one better. <laughs> what is a Paloma? <laughs> it's a grapefruit-based um, drink. I think it's grapefruit and gin, if I recall correctly. This is the oh. only beer that has grapefruit in it that I enjoy. I Because I hate grapefruit. That, that's how come it's much more sour. I yes. only know it's that because fruit. Dustin was on a grape or a Paloma kick for like a month. He was like, "I want a Paloma." So <laughs> is that how he said it? Yeah. I want a Paloma. <laughs> Just before the, he started, when he dance. dance. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, John, you're the beer guy. What do you give it? Um, again, not a fan of the sour, so I'm going <laughs> to give it a five point five. You know what? I'm not a fan of sours, but I I actually kind of like this. I'm going to give it a seven. Well, I am going to give it a 6.5 because I could leave it or take it, but it, 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 it's a change. It's a nice change. Yeah. If you want a sour, it's sour. Yeah, for sure. I'm going to give it an 8. It's, I like the flavor. It's not like super sour where it makes you like pucker or anything, but it's, it's good. Awesome. <laughs> All That's right. That's our civilian commentary. Yes. Yeah. So screwed up. <laughs> <laughs> and that is, and our beer moment is brought to you by Kenny's Grocery out of Orange City. They are right there on 1792 and French Avenue, and they have over 500 beers, craft beers, you name it. These guys have got it, and I'll tell you what, if you're looking for it, just go by Kenny's, and uh, if he doesn't have it, you ask the uh, folks that work there. They can probably get it for you. So yeah. Kenny's Grocery. And I was there tonight, and they have a 99-pack of PBR, if you're interested. A 99-pack? Oh, yeah. It's yeah. like six foot long. Oh, oh yeah. It's, my it's God. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's right up by the front registers. It's nuts. Yeah. Give yeah, take. about that. <laughs> and we'd like to <laughs> and give a special... be drunk. <laughs> we'd like to give a special thanks to our second sponsor, yeah. which is CNR... Constructors, general contractor out of Central Florida, specializing in commercial build-outs and 
home remodeling, reconstruction. Um, if you need it done, these guys can do it. They are experts and let them build your future. That is their uh, tagline because I'll tell you what, these guys do absolutely fantastic work. So visit them at www.crconstructors.net and they would appreciate it very much. Thank you guys for your sponsorship. Appreciate it. All right. With that being said, we're going to talk about our uh, following officer salute. Uh, this year, 2022, we've had so far in the last 21 days, 15 police officers have passed uh, two with vehicle crashes. Uh, we talked about those uh, last last episode. One gunfire, one struck by vehicle, and 11 by COVID-19. I'm really hoping that that number, wow. um, COVID, is not as bad as last year or the year before. But we're sitting at at uh, 15 right now. So uh, to those who have fallen, end of watch. We salute. Rest in peace. Salute. Love you guys. Rest in peace. All right. So, Caitlin. Ben Franklin, serial killer? No. No? Are you guys asking me why I'm, you're, you guys are wondering why I'm asking Caitlin that, right? Sort of, but <laughs> I did see the preview of the notes, so I do have an idea. <laughs> and and the, and the weirdest thing is, I didn't know about this. And this is like, what, almost 10 years old, almost a 10-year-old story. And one of my students said, hey, Mr. Long, is, is Ben Franklin a serial killer? I'm like, but I looked it up. And apparently, Ben Franklin's house has, in the last 10 years, been um, remodeled, and they're working on it. They found 15 bodies in his basement. Yeah, but could those have been... That's the crime scene. His, murder, his murder victims? Yes, or they could, could have, have been, been friends, family, and he just buried him there because he didn't want to bury him. That's what you guys are going somewhere else? He's not a serial killer? So the Smithsonian well, I, I just website, website I just kind of wanted... elaborate a little bit. Okay, what does Smithsonian's website say? That it was possible of... Um... The Black Plague. <laughs> <laughs> it was like... Um, studying? Like, uh, yeah, studying, like medical Anatomy? students. Yeah. yeah, that. Okay. God, my Cadavers? Brain. Kind of. Was it's... it COVID? It was <laughs> <laughs> very we first find strain of COVID, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, COVID I, I, of the 1700s. I get what you're saying because before modern era, doctors actually had to resort to hiring grave robbers to steal cadavers so they could study them and learn anatomy and physiology. So And he was somewhat of a scientist. He was. So, yeah, yeah, so, so I assumed he was doing like experiments on live people and then just being like, oops, and then burying them in his Oh, that's basement. what you're going with. That's Wouldn't that make him a serial killer? Or was it on purpose? Maybe it like was an accidental. Intentional, yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Oops. All right. Maybe like hey, if you guys was, if you guys have an opinion about Ben Franklin being a serial killer, send us a comment in the uh, message thing area. Uh, in the, the comment comments section. below. <laughs> <laughs> of YouTube. Or you can send us an email, retiredcopsrule at gmail. Is Ben Franklin a serial killer? All right, speaking of serial killers, Smart we're going to talk asses. tonight about Robert Hayes, the Daytona Beach serial killer. And I, I, I had no idea that this was actually coming up here. Um, and I actually worked this case. Uh, LT sent me uh, or sent us a, a link that he was in Volusia County was last week at a hearing. Yes. Um, to find out what. It, it, so in pre-trial, there you have what's called pre-trial motions. Wow. What? Who would have thought it? Right? Come up with those ideas. <laughs> His picture is on the screen now. If, if for those of you watching and not just listening. Uh, so they had a bunch of pre-trial motions, and his his trial is going to be coming up soon. They want to determine what can be used, and they do a lot of this so that when trial happens, it's a smooth flow and there's not a lot of delay. So they get rid of all the procedural stuff, all the legal stuff, suppression hearings, things like that, prior to the trial, so it goes nice and smoothly and it keeps going. So Robert Hayes, um, there were three women murdered in 2005 and 2006 in Daytona Beach. And one of them, it was so weird, the, the first one that was killed was killed um, on Beach Street. And if you've ever been down Beach Street, there's some buildings and stuff. And there's a real skinny, like, alleyways. I mean, I know LT and I probably couldn't get through it. Um, you kind of have to go like this. But she was stuffed into that alleyway. So that's, that's victim number one. And this is Daytona Beach, Florida. Yeah, Daytona Beach, shot in the back of the head, uh, 40 caliber. Second victim was, and, and she was uh, sexually assaulted 
and she was a so as my generation likes to say prostitute sex worker sex worker i mean the we could use the term of the generation before me but that would probably be even less appropriate please, please don't <laughs> A lady of the evening? Yeah, we can, we can do a lady of the evening, yes. not. Uh, anyway. Not uh, concubine? <laughs> concubine. That's way, that's like when you were around. Like in the, the 1600s. See, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, uh, second victim, uh, also shot in the back of the head, sexually assaulted, um, dumped on a, uh, um, a dirt road in, in Daytona, a quite a distance from the first one, but still within city limits. And actually at this one, they, they found uh, tire tracks at the scene. So we've got shell casings from a 40 caliber. We have 40 caliber uh, projectile and DNA and um, tire prints. So we've got some good evidence. But no DNA on the second one, according to my notes. Okay. And right? One? DNA on the first one, no DNA on the second one. Yes, you're right. And there's no DNA. When was this? 2005. 2005 and to 2006. Yeah, number one was 2005. Number two was 2006. Was CSI? But it was only, hold on, it was only a month later. So it was December 05, January 06. So it's only a month. Yeah, so we have a, what's that called? A cooling off period? Cooling off period. Right. So. February 24th, we have a third victim. A month later, month, month and later. A half, yep, actually. So we, cooling off period, about a month. So there's not, when we talk about serial killers, there's not a specific time. It doesn't have to be this amount of time. It's whatever they think their cooling off period is. Could be a week. Could be a day. Could be a day. A night. Yeah, a day or a night. Go home, go sleep. Well, I mean, go yeah. home, go to sleep. Right. You know, um, and you know, sometimes it... Unless it, he was on midnight shift, then it would be a day when he went home went to sleep. That's true. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> 12 to 24 hour period where it could be cooling off. And there's the clarification that we uh, needed right uh, there. Uh, <laughs> freaking civilians. Damn civilians. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, the third victim, it, it looked like that she, she had struggled with the killer. DNA was, was recovered. A shell casing. 45 caliber. Smith & Wesson. Um, now... As, as they're figuring out, hey, we got, we probably have a serial killer here. They're like, okay, um, let's let's dig a little deeper into, and it's a, it's really neat what they can do is every, every gun has a unique signature in the barrel, the extractor, the ejector. So they were able to determine that the gun was a Smith & Wesson Sigma. They're like, okay. Because of the rifling on the bullet, the extractor shell casing, things like that. So we were able to narrow down. And like I said, I had worked after this third killing um, when I was with the state, they brought, I wasn't a the case agent or anything, but we brought That's everybody That's why it in. wasn't solved back then. Right. If I were the guy. <laughs> okay. It would have been solved. I was confused. I mean, absolutely. Yeah. Well, it took solved. And yeah. go back a second because a lot of folks, I mean, I'm reading in the notes here, so I, I know what you're talking about, but... You say struggled with her killer. Now, obviously, the dead person is not going to say, hey, I fought this son of a bitch. How do they know? How do they know? What do they look for to know that so, she struggled with yeah, her killer? Yeah, so you're looking at if there's anything under the, under the fingernails. You're looking at any defensive wounds. You're looking at um, maybe the first two victims didn't have any uh, bruising or punching or stuff like that where the individual would have had to have, have, have subdued the individual. So those those things like that's what you're looking Scrapings under the fingernails, yeah. which yeah. you can get the DNA. Scene, right, the, the scene, if it looks, because I remember this scene, the third one, you know where uh, Daytona Beach Police Department is now? Mm-hmm. That's where she was dumped. Before wow. they built the police st- station, wow. that's where she was dumped, right there on, on that property. So that's... Uh, interesting, yeah, but you, you would look at that kind of stuff. You'd right, it, it, right. look at the scene. It's just for our viewers. Yeah, of course. We've never uh, done absolutely. One of these. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Why did um, they build the new station though, where she was dumped? It was, it was already it was it was already purchased and everything. And her, it's, it wasn't like, hey, we have a serial killer body there. Let's build our police station. That'd there. be fun, you know, just a little tidbit of information. <laughs> well, 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 now she haunts the police. Right. Department. Yeah. <laughs> so when, if you see when, they're, ghost. when they're doing <laughs> tours, you know. And just so you folks would know, as you're checking out the jail and the other 
There was somebody dumped here from a murder in 2006. In case they want to become the next St. Augustine. Mm-hmm. Right. They have yeah. someone in the background. Chores. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Flicking the lights yeah. on and off. <laughs> well, y'all are insensitive <laughs> pricks. <laughs> Damn it, man. I, I realized the other day that I am insensitive. Just right? by the way, just to let you know, because everybody thinks cops are insensitive, the civilian said that first. Just but, saying. But she is my daughter, so doesn't yeah. matter. She's mm-hmm. still a civvy. <laughs> All right. So after we have three victims, shit got real. We're like, okay, we need to we need to start. The first two weren't real? Well, it was like, nah, maybe. It's you know, Daytona. It's Daytona. There's murders. And then we're like, okay, we got three victims, same shell casings, everything. We got a serial killer here. And it was like all hands on deck. We brought in um, a profiler, not from the FBI. What, what happened is after the F- F- FBI um, profile program, what they did is they offered that up to all law enforcement in the United States, and they could go to the school and become a state profiler. So we brought in our, our profile. <clears throat> we knew what type of murder weapon it was. We ran the DNA in CODIS, which is the combined DNA index system. Nothing. Um, the individual who left the DNA with these victims had not been convicted. Unlike fingerprints. Fingerprints, if you're arrested, they take your fingerprints. Absolutely. On, on DNA, it's only upon felony conviction. So there was no CODIS. And um, that's all felony convictions? They take I, I, DNA they, they, s- they started... With just a couple, and now I think it's all felony. Is it okay? Yeah. All right. At the very beginning of this CODIS program, there was sexual offenders and, and murder. Right. Ru- you know, yeah, there was serious persons right. crimes. And right. I, now I think they've. And if I'm wrong, give me a note in the uh, in the comments section. So, um, whenever there's a case like this, they they enact what's called, and I thought we called it uh, rapid start, and it's like a leads program. And they set up a phone system for anybody who calls in and said, hey, I think I know who did this. And everybody who's involved in the case would come in into the headquarters and they'd pick up a case, uh, a lead, right? You'd pick up the, the sheet and it would say, hey, so-and-so believes that so-and-so may have killed the person who collect DNA. So we would go out and we'd conduct an interview and we'd talk to them and we'd say, hey, do you mind submitting to a DNA sample? And we just... Swab the cheeks. Is this the suspect or the caller? The caller would call into the tip line. Okay. And they would say, hey, I think Bob Smith may have done this. So, you, so the team would go to Bob Smith? The team would go to Bob Smith okay. and say, hey, I don't know if you know, we're working this case in Daytona, and we're just trying to track down all the leads. We're not saying you're the person, but we do have to run down all of these leads. Would you mind submitting a, a, a sample of DNA? So we did that crap ton. I remember DNA get, getting DNA samples from cops, from civilians, a lot of people. And you just you go, la, 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 on the, on the cheek, and you submit it, and then you grab your next lead. And they, they send that to the lab. Um, they, the Daytona Police Department would set up um, sting operations with uh, prostitutes. And every John, yeah, I'm sorry, workers. I'm sorry, not whores, we don't know not whores, <laughs> concubines. <laughs> At least I didn't say hookers, right? <laughs> so fishermen, the, <laughs> fishermen. <laughs> so they would do these sting operations, and any Johns that they arrested. Oh, I can't be offended by that. <laughs> any any pure. Cur- Purchasers of prostitutes would be customer, (laughs) customer, purveyors, (laughs) purveyors. (laughs) We found a rabbit hole. We're just gonna keep going. Yeah, just keep just keep digging in. So they would, um, when they arrested them, say, "Hey, can we take your DNA sample?" And they did that. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Had hundreds of leads. It just, it, it, it just kind of just. That's the way it went. Um. We developed a suspect. We developed a, a, a an individual in Volusia County. An actual suspect, not a profile type thing. No, this was this was a suspect. We we developed a suspect, and we had we really thought this guy was it. I mean, he checked off all the boxes: violent history, violent history with women. I mean, this was our guy. We were really thinking that this was our guy. Um, we surveilled him. 
just find out if he would, you know, go to a 7-Eleven or something, get a Slurpee, throw it away, take the straw. Nope. Every time he went out to go to dinner, he would bring it home. Um, and he lived in a um, couldn't get salvage the, yard. He couldn't get the fork? No, he would just, he would pick up to go. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So he wouldn't sit in. He any, wouldn't oh, sit anywhere. He wouldn't so if, he, out. if, if thank he, you for making that clear. <laughs> <laughs> if he I thought he took his goddamn silverware. From the rest. <laughs> <laughs> he just like taking the whole. Plate yeah, I'm like, what the hell? He just, okay, oh, thank you. They serve him his plate. He just goes. Here, <laughs> <laughs> out the door with silverware and all. And it I is Daytona. Who knows? Right. Well, I, sure. I, I apologize. Uh, <laughs> so no, it's probably just me. No, yeah, it's I'm me. Sure. I'm sure it's me and yeah. the numerous right. drinks. Anyway. <laughs> So go ahead. <laughs> so we tried to surveil this guy. We'd follow him. He oh he always went and got food to go. Never. And then on top of that, he would never throw his trash out. He would burn it. So we're like, oh, what the fuck? How do we get a smart DNA? guy? Right. So a little weird. Yeah. A little weird. Yeah. Oh yeah. A lot weird. <laughs> he he lived in a uh, he lived on a trailer in a salvage yard, and um. Not me. Some other people said, hey, why don't we convince them to do a surveillance? We, long story short, we... Long story short. <laughs> uh, uh, we essentially that's... befriended this guy. And he talked, and he talked about he, how we knew this guy was a convicted felon. And we found that he owned firearms. Mm. And he was in possession of firearms. So, with that information, you were no longer friends. That's kind of mean. You gave this guy's trust, and he's like, hey, check out these guns. <laughs> You're like, zoink, back to jail, bitch. Check out these guns. <laughs> yeah. So, I, I I was assigned to writing the search warrant on this case. And, sorry. <laughs> so, I was assigned, I, I wrote the search warrant on this case. We hit his place with the search warrant. We recovered the guns, arrested him. Possession of firearm by convicted felon, possession of ammo by convicted felon, blah, blah, blah. We took him to the station. Which in the state of Florida is a second degree felony. And the lead investigators interviewed him, interviewed him, interviewed him, take his, take his DNA. While we we're at the salvage yard, we recovered tires that were from the scene. They were the tires left at scene two. two. Scene two. The and tires. how do you know? Because Did when they, somebody take a cast of the tires. Yes, on they, the scene? they they casted the tires. They photographed. How long was the cast? So probably pretty long. The long the tire cast. That, how long does a tire cast have to be? About nine feet is how long a, 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 a typical. Don't don't test me. I'm just don't. <laughs> I'm trying to educate the public. <laughs> so what we're saying is they use like a plaster of Paris. Type material and they pour it into the tread pattern on the ground and it basically makes an inverted tire pattern of that tire and it's got to be what nine feet yeah, eight a, feet a long. typical tire is about nine feet long. basically you want to have the entire revolution if you ha- if you right. have it if you only have a small section that's all you can get but a but typical the more tire the is about nine feet the more the better and that's how they matched it up to this tire okay, so so they got the they got Good, photo- huh? they got photographs they got the the dental stone cast of the uh, tire from the scene. And then while we were searching the scene, we're like, and, okay, backtrack a little bit. Once you get a, a cast and the photographs of the tires, you can actually run it through a system, and they will tell you what to make the model, what it fits right. on, everything. So a certain, certain tread pattern. Right. Every tire, it's almost like a fingerprint. Almost. It'll tell quite. you the make and model. Right. It'll at least right. take, it'll tell you the make and model. Right. If it's so a we, good year... You know, TA or whatever. When we hit this place with a search warrant, we knew what, you know, Cooper tire or whatever we were right, looking for. Right. So when we found, oh, you know, XYZ tire, let's take it. That was the actual tire from the scene. It was And 100%. this is still that guy that y'all were yes. hot and heavy for. Yes. Okay. We're like, this is our guy. Gotta be. Gotta be. Gotta be. Convicted felon, gun, local. Tire, People have everything. been convicted on much less circumstantial right. evidence. DNA? Yes. Could he have bought the tire used? Well, it he was could've. a salvage yard. So, guess what? Wasn't him. Not one the him. guy. Wasn't him. Damn it, man! <laughs> it was not the guy. Now, and we're, just out of curiosity, what was it that made 
the lead agent, not you, the lead agent decided he wasn't the guy. Was it the DNA? DNA, DNA, DNA was, wasn't him. Okay. Yeah. That was it? Just DNA. Yeah. Everything else said, it's the guy. Yeah, I, I can I, tell you back in now, the 19... 19- now, another, hold on. Another thing is we did not find the gun that we were looking for. The gun that we knew committed, you know, was used right. to commit this crime. In so we didn't 19- find the gun and the DNA didn't match. Pre-1960s? Pre 1970s. Well, 1986 was no. I'm saying, yeah. With everything you had, Mm -hmm. this guy probably would have been holding on to a freaking murder charge. Yeah, with the tires being right there, tires, everything else about man, that that's a good yeah. Yeah. So so it was like, and 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 then we continued to you know just work the case, but it was not him. Thank God for DNA. I'm telling you right right now, it has proven. A lot of people that were wrongly convicted, it has proven them innocent, and it has convicted a lot of people that would have gotten away with it other than DUI. Yeah, I mean, however, DNA. <laughs> however, it's also not able to be used as much as people think it can be. Right, absolutely. Yeah, it's not and, a surefire. Thing. Well, and, right. and fingerprints are better than DNA because DNA can be identical, identical twins. Mm-hmm. But the point is, people think that, oh, just get DNA. Right. Hey, well, number one, you have to get it off of something that we can articulate and be you know, able to prove that this actually came from them. And there's still, you know, a lot of controversy over touch DNA versus, right. you know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, if you're going to use the guy's straw, <laughs> you would have had to have somebody sitting there watching him the entire time, pull it out of the paper, put it in his mouth, discard it. Nobody was near the trash. Nobody touched it. Nobody messed with it. You got it right after he touched it. I mean, now, and, yeah, there's but, a lot. But that would still give you probable cause for a search warrant for it his DNA. Correct. It would. Yes. It would. But I'm just saying there's there's a lot more, more going than, into yes. it than, you know, the general public But also, thinks. we're not necessarily, we're not going to do DNA research for burglary and someone no. cut their no. finger. No. No. no we absolutely. have a little bit of blood drop, you know, blood drop right here. Get no. the DNA. No. Because it's very labor intensive. It's expensive. No. And there's a lot more priority cases than a burglary. Absolutely. Yeah. So this is 2006, and the case goes cold, unfortunately. All right? Really quick. Yes. How mad was the guy that you guys befriended him? He's like, these guys are chill. He went to prison for possession of firearm by a convicted felon. I don't care how mad he was. Shame on him. He you shouldn't possess But he was probably pretty pissed. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you guys were fucking chill. And yeah. Like, back to jail for the... Sorry, Tucker. Was- he was probably pretty pissed. Don't be a scumbag. What? All right. So, West Palm Beach, 2019. What's that? More than 10 years later. Uh, uh, Palm Beach County yeah. arrests Robert Hayes for killing an individual named Rachel Bay. So, he murders this girl, Rachel, Rachel Bay. 13 years later. Okay. Yeah. So, more than 10 years. What I yep. Said. Yep. Um, strangulates her. Strangling. Um, Strangulates. Right? New one. Uh, strangles. <laughs> Strangled. Uh-huh. It was a strangling. <laughs> and you wonder why we're cops. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is, if you ever see any memes out there where it says something to the effect of somebody's out there trying to convince a family member not to submit their DNA to genealogical DNA. This is one of those instances. Okay. So a family member of our suspect, our... our submitted Palm Beach County suspect. Yes. Submitted, you're like, hey, I'm wondering... Ancestry.com. Yeah, yeah. Crazy yeah. Right. thing. Yeah. 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 I, I, I wonder if I'm Viking or not. <laughs> so... Oh, who would that be? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it comes back. And FDLE, Florida Department of Law Enforcement, had set up what's called a... Their uh, genetic genealogy unit, which works with those private companies so that they can check cases that they have with people that have submitted their DNA. Oh, that's so, sneaky. So now, <laughs> is that in the fine print somewhere <laughs> yeah. you submit Oh, yes. yes. Absolutely, wow. there is. Because some, so, some companies won't do it. Right, right, right. Yeah. Yes, because actually, you know, because they'll, they'll not only use it for that, they'll use it for medical testing. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. if they can detect that you have a certain gene that indicates that you have a fantastic blood for whatever or whatever it is, they're gonna they'll use it for that. Once you submit your sample, 
It's there. So you it's kind of like being on Facebook. Once you put your shit on Facebook, exactly. everybody in the world's the got exact access. Same thing. Yeah. Whether the exact Whether you give them access thing. or not, they got access. But now the you, problem is, you sign up for Facebook. You sign up for yep. Facebook. Mm -hmm. Your problem is, if she decides to submit her DNA, you're screwed. Right. If you did something wrong. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So you didn't have to give up anything. Right. Right. She yeah. did. So um, you guys did on, on Murder Hour a, uh, a case like this. Yes, the Golden State Killer. Um, it was decades long, you know, no real big break in the case. And then finally, someone submitted their DNA to one of these, you know, genetic Genial. things. Yeah, and it was a hit. It was like a second cousin or some shit like that. And it um, ended up being the guy. It was just like some... Rando. Wow. Was yeah. Just, yeah. That's awesome. And he had been going around. He, he killed a crap ton and raped people. Yes, and Golden State was, Killer was just. Yeah, that he was would crazy. like stack plates on the husband's back after tying him up so he could hear if the husband was moving while he was assaulting the wife. And it was just like. Just wow. wild. And this guy was a cop. Yeah. You guys need to check out Murder Hour podcast. They go through some really unique cases, serial killer cases and all. It's great. And they have fun. They have a beer moment and everything else. Make sure you check out Murder Hour podcast. So FDLE sets up this genealogical unit. Um, since its inception, they've solved about 70 cases countrywide, rapes, murders, things like that through, through this system. Um, a link to Robert Hayes to the Daytona Beach killer uh, killings was established. They <laughs> put this guy under surveillance, like like we did with our guy in in uh, in, in Volusia County, and he threw out a cigarette butt, mm -hmm. and we well they put the habeas gravis on mm -hmm. the cigarette butt, came back to him. They got a, uh, a search warrant or for his DNA, and lo and behold, it, it was him. Could they have gotten a search warrant for his DNA based on the genealogical? You know, that's a good question. I'm not sure. Because if they could have... Probably not because would it they wasn't have. him. It wasn't right. him that submitted it. Right. They probably looked at all the family of that individual and, and yeah. maybe even conducted surveillance on a few of them. Or they but identified... But all they had to do was who, find the guy that lived in the area. I mean, that narrows yeah, down your yeah, circle. Okay. I mean, no. And I understand it's going to And they had no down. idea about Daytona. Right. Right. The, the, the point I'm getting at is... Because a lot of times you can determine that... This person is a brother or sister of another. Right. Okay, so... You can eliminate the sister. Right. Right. Okay, and he's only got one other brother. Right. So, you, you may not have been able to prove that Robert Hayes committed the crime yet, but you can prove that Robert Hayes' biological brother right. committed the crime. Right. Or... Robert Hayes' biological brother submitted the DNA. Yeah. Therefore, since the only other biological brother of Robert Hayes, of Robert Hayes is the guy who submitted the DNA, yeah. he is it, and therefore couldn't you get a search warrant at that point? Yeah. You know what? Maybe the state attorney would say, you know what? Do a little more. Okay. You know? And hopefully I don't know why I wasn't there. If a criminal has left DNA at a crime scene, that they wouldn't be submitting their DNA to... You know, right. Genealogical website. Yeah, that would be kind of dumb, right? Hope. Yeah. You know. <laughs> I would hope they would. But he was a <laughs> he was a student at Bethune Cookman. Huh? Yeah. So oh, wow. a little background: um, Bethune Cookman University at the time of the Daytona Beach slayings, a criminal justice major. Obviously, he didn't do well. I mean, honestly, or, or actually did pretty good. <laughs> no, he didn't. I mean, he he just looked. Trial. He left the shell casing. He, he left DNA. He the, left other, the other guy did a way better job than this guy. <laughs> the guy it turned out not to be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he only got caught because his brother turned around and said, you know, why don't you find out it was a Viking? <laughs> That's because they were chasing the other guy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so some more information on Hayes. Um, they found out that he had purchased a, a firearm from uh, a gun store in Daytona. Now, I wasn't... Part of I didn't go to this guy, but he was interviewed by the detectives in the Daytona case because of the purchase of the firearm. And they never took DNA from him. Why not? I, I don't know. I couldn't find out why not. Did he not? I was going to remind you that he wasn't the lead agent. Right, right, right. And I and I wasn't the agent working. 
I didn't go on that lead. Did he not fit the profile? Or no, I mean, if 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 it were me, I mean, I don't want to shit on anybody. You know what? All I know is, anytime we went out, we took DNA. I don't know why whoever went out and talked to him did not. Um, he was he was contacted twice, and it, it, it's weird. A lot of times, you you will if you study a lot of serial killers, they get contacted by cops all the time. Yeah. Yeah, and, and for whatever reason, he just slipped through the case until the uh, um, uh, case in um, the gun they never recovered. When they interviewed him, he said, yeah, you know that gun I bought? I gave it to my mom. When they talked to mom, mom said, oh, yeah, I, don't, I didn't get that gun. And then when he, went to, when he moved to South Florida, he reported it stolen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, yeah, imagine that. Uh, so, so you say they asked for DNA samples from... From the owners of similar guns? Yes. So if if we knew what gun that was right. used, and we said, okay, these 25 people had purchased this gun. From we where? Various gun stores, gun shops. I mean, did you did you concentrate in an area? Or Lush, well, we started with okay. Lush County. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, we started with Lush County because okay. there's a lot of gun shops. And we got we got uh, ATF involved. They helped us out. Right. Okay, um, and it's one hundred percent voluntary. Hey, would you mind giving me a DNA? Yeah, sample? yeah. No, I was just yeah. asking how you. These folks don't know, right? No, so no. That's, that's why how you picked an area. Or, so I mean, we started with Lush County. Right. We started with Daytona. All the gun shops in Daytona. Daytona yeah. is in Volusia County. For those of you from Seven far hours. off lands Seven. and you know <laughs> that, that don't know where. It's so we would the most famous beach, right? Most deadly. Yeah, but they don't know Volusia <laughs> County. Oh, yeah. So we, we started with Daytona. Anybody who purchased a gun in Daytona that matched that gun that was used, and then we would go out and we would talk to them and ask for them for, for a DNA. Hey, we have Canadians listening. That's Do we? True. Yes. Uh, are we? Oh, yeah. Hello. Hello. Yeah, yeah. But don't we also have, like, international? Yes. Like, Europe, India, like, India, the whole nine yards. Uh, my, fo- my, my friends from the Virgin Islands. Yes. Absolutely. Virgin Sorry. Islands. Yeah. Uh, well, you know. <laughs> anyway, yes, we would we we uh, got records from from individuals, and if we if they had purchased this gun um, within this time frame, we would go out and we'd ask DNA from these individuals. And then I don't know why he was not requested for his DNA. Sometimes that happens. So are are you saying he was not, or he refused? Or he was not. Done? He was not asked for yeah, his. He DNA. wasn't asked. Okay. Yeah. I, I I know it's that I know that my research. Like I said, I wasn't. Mm-hmm. In on that one, um, all the ones we went, all nobody refused when I went out on DNA. Nobody refused. My point is, it would be documented. He refused. Yes. Not- and and the thing is, it will be documented anyway. There, anytime we get a got a lead, we would write a report up, and then and then submit it, and all that is is in a, in a database somewhere. What whoever went out on this lead and made contact with this guy, there's a report of it. I don't know if it's public access or public record, but it would be there. So um, Robert Hayes, Daytona Beach serial killer, arrested. He's going to be facing trial soon and uh, one more off the street. And here it is how many years later? Mm-hmm. 18 years later, yeah. and he's just now mm-hmm. facing trial. Mm-hmm. I mean, come on, man. That, another problem with our yeah. freaking... System. Si- society. Hey, we still haven't figured out I mean, Ben Franklin was a serial killer. Oh, he was. Man. And it all comes down to someone submitting their DNA to what? Genealogy. Yeah. yeah. One, two, three. So, yeah. Wow, that is, that's so, insane. Is, so that why, is that why you keep not putting it in? Hey, I'm no snitch. I'm <laughs> no, what you're saying, though, is even if you commit the perfect crime and do everything perfectly... Yep. Because even mm-hmm. if he picked up the, yeah. if he had picked up the shell case, he, if he did everything right, other than leaving his DNA at the scene, which, you know, there is a way he probably could have prevented that. But, okay, other than leaving his DNA, mm-hmm. if he did everything else right, he'd still be in the same situation he is. Well, the, um, other than the DNA. The so, yeah. so the, uh, the, get, uh, Gaines are a serial killer. What was his name? Um, oh, I, my, my, my booze brain. Anyway, go ahead. This, the Gainesville serial killer, what he did with his victims is he used bleach to, to destroy his DNA. That was on CSI. Yeah. yeah. So they're, they're, Ted Bundy? 
No, uh, no, no. Um, that's like FSU. Person. Oh, okay. Yeah. What? Florida. Ted Bundy. It, two people in Florida. The little girl in, oh, pa- in the right. panhandle. Okay, so, yeah. so how many? Oh, I'm Murder Hour. I know murder. It's how, how many serial <laughs> killers have have made their way through Daytona Beach, Florida? No. Oh. Eileen Warnos. I Almost mean, all of them. Right? Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. A, a, a crap ton. And you know yeah. what's funny is is uh, a chief from a long time ago that uh, was at our agency, um, he was big into us going out on the interstate and stopping people for speed and whatever else. And he always Violations cautioned us. Huh? Violations of the law. And he <laughs> always cautioned us and because he had been told... Numerous times by ATF, DEA, FBI, this and that, when he would go to the big chiefs meetings and everything else, says, you know what's funny is the other day we arrested XYZ for, you know, umpteen million crimes. We finally caught the guy. And lo and behold, when we ran his history and we looked into it, your officers stopped them on I-4 coming for, you know, XYZ violation. And it was just a traffic violation. Yeah. Ted Bundy got caught yeah. for right. a traffic violation. Yep. You know, so for you officers that are out there listening to this show, watching the show, you know, don't forget to do your criminal patrol techniques when you're out with these people. You know, get all the information you can, put it in the database, because you never know when something like this case right here is going to turn up a suspect in a bunch of homicides or whatever because. <coughs> You took the extra 30 seconds to get their full name, their phone number, their address, or a fingerprint if they didn't have their license with them, something like that. Go that extra step, guys. It makes a difference. It really yeah, use your observation skills. The, uh, the, the, the other serial killer case I worked out of our old agency. Anton Myers. No. Daryl Anton Myers. No, he only killed one. Oh, I'm sorry. Sarah Richard. Carr. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Richard Rogers, who, oh, yeah, yeah. who killed um, Piro. He drove up I-4 with a dead body, dumped him. Dumped it in, in Lake Mary. Yeah. yeah. And then psh, went back up yeah. to up north. You had that problem, too. I had people driving to Lake Mary to kill themselves. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's just because you went into CID and they called him the, uh, what do they call you? The Grim Reaper. Yeah, the Grim Reaper. <laughs> the, guy goes in, the guy goes into CID. He's assigned there for like two weeks and we have like Freaking three freaking suicides in two weeks. Jesus. No, it was a little longer than that, but it I was think pretty I only soon. worked like four in no, the I, five I, years I, I was there. No, I literally <laughs> had two, like <laughs> back to back. <laughs> one week apart. <laughs> it was crazy because the investigator from the uh, ME's office shows up. He's like, seriously. <laughs> they brought him one of the black sickles oh, and they, they hung it in his cubicle, man. I'm telling you, they got him the Grim Reaper. Oh, I'm like, same time next week? <laughs> I mean, it was... It yeah, was, but people were literally driving to the city. Yeah. Themselves. They weren't even residents. Really? They were coming to the city and pow, boom, you know, whatever. Yeah. yeah, yeah one guy crazy. drives to his brother's house, parks in front of his brother's house, and shoots himself. Mm. Okay, well, great. That's that's nice. Yeah, he, nice. he lived in the next city over. I go to the next city over to because he lived with his mom. Okay, well, let me interview mom. What the hell happened? Oh, well, he was supposed to take both of us. What? <laughs> I'm like, so now it was supposed to be a murder suicide. Wow. Yeah, well, good thing it wasn't. Well, nice paperwork. Yes. <laughs> well, it would have been long with problem. Yeah, that's true. That's <laughs> odd. All right. Hey, guys, thank you very much for sitting in on our drunken rant about Robert Hayes, uh, the Daytona Beach serial killer. Um, If you have any comments, if we screwed up in any way, please add a comment down at the bottom. Subscribe, like, all that kind of stuff. Send it to your friends saying, oh, my God, that that Surviving Demise is the greatest podcast of all times. And don't forget, you can get your uh, wherever you listen to your podcasts, which is Apple, Spotify, Anchor, We're available on all of those platforms, as is the Murder Hour podcast. So you can check out both of ours. You'll hear, um, you will hear Caitlin and Dustin, who couldn't make this show, but uh, and Camille stars on that one also. So you will hear all those folks. So I have a uh, a question for you. If you subscribed YouTube and answer this question, so I remembered it now. Finally, (laughs) what was the name of the Daytona Beach? Not Daytona. The Gainesville serial killer 
Answer that in the comments, subscribe, and we'll send you out a sticker. You can also email us if you want, retiredcopsrule at gmail.com. Nice. We appreciate everyone listening. Thank you very much. And keep thank the you, comments Caitlin. coming. We appreciate it. Thank and you, Caitlin, for joining thank us. You, thank Caitlin, you, Caitlin, very much. We appreciate me. it. We'll have you on in the in the future. And maybe when you get your thing fired back up again, you can have the three of us on there and we can have a waylay of a time over right? there at yeah. uh, we'll Murder Hour Podcast. Podcast. I'll, I'll, Absolutely. I'll, 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 I'll do another You Are the Detective case. and right. Yeah. Yeah, right. that'll be fun. Yeah. That, that was a lot of fun. I, I was in that. on one of those. Yeah. That was a lot yeah. of fun. Yeah. And don't forget, at Surviving the Batch, we, we still, still got, got your six. six. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.